I now want to welcome three folks who are also doing some amazing work in the world. Um, and let's let's bring them on. We have, I want to welcome Sophia Dannenberg, Lael Johnson, and James King Jr. Welcome, 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 everybody. Hey. Um, why don't we go ahead and just get started where you can introduce yourselves and we'll go, uh, since we're on Zoom and everybody knows how Zoom is, it, it's, it's great and it gets a little crazy. Why don't we just start with Sophia, go to Lael and then James, if you can introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do and your passions. Hi, um, I am Sophia Dannenberg and I am coming to you from um, beautiful Kama Beach State Park. Um, I should note that um, it is a very active park, so um, people might come by, they're checking in for camping, they're getting to the cabins, and so if you see hear a little kid running in the background, um, that could happen. Um, I am a Washington State Parks and Recreation Commissioner, um, which is why I'm in a state park. Um, I have a passion for public lands and the environment. Um, uh, I am a mountain climber, a uh, rock climber, ice climber, um, and uh, bearing the lead, I guess uh, most people know me as the first African-American um, to summit Mount Everest and the first black woman to summit Mount Everest. Awesome. All right, all right. Thank you, Sophia. Woo! Okay, I wanna hear more about mountain climbing later. Go ahead, <laughs> Leah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Leo Johnson. I'm the uh, owner of Fly Guide. And uh, I'm a fly fishing guide in Washington State and Alaska. Um, I've been doing this for uh, going on nine years now and uh, just really trying to do my part to help others enjoy uh, Washington. This is an amazing place and also trying to uh, make it a more inclusive sport for, uh, for people that are um, in events like, uh, like we're having today. So I'm just trying to do my best to, to do that and, and speak to others about uh, how important the outdoors is to have in your life. Thank you. And James, bring us home. <laughs> uh, James Overkin Jr. from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, home of the Muscogee and Creek. Currently live here uh, in the land of the Duwamish, Seattle. Go by he, him, his pronouns. Uh, I I love the outdoors and I love to be able to engage people in the outdoors. I tell people I work with K through gray. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yes. That's awesome. uh, yeah, K2 great communities and also uh, social responsibility with corporations, all surrounding the environment. So if it's talking about creating projects to get uh, people outdoors or talking about um, getting people in the career space and outdoors, facilitating conversations with leadership, uh, that's that's where you find me. That's the realm. Um, but I, in the outdoors, I mean, I, I love being out on, on rivers. I love fishing. I love exploring. Uh, we we had earlier conversations and, and you know I'm getting into snowboarding, but I just love venturing and and, and seeing the world and, and these various different outdoor spaces. So yeah. Well, you know, James, we'll start with you and then we'll go back to Lael and, and Lana and Sophia. Um, what got you interested or into the outdoors? And um, yeah, and what keeps drawing you back? Uh, you mentioned being at Atlanta. I don't know if that's where you were born and raised, but what got you into the outdoors? Yeah, Atlanta, I'm born and raised. Uh, when you think of, or some people don't think, Atlanta is, or once was uh, the most forested city um, in, in, a, in big metropolitan cities. And so I always had trees, the creeks, played with the, uh, the frogs. And then being a Georgia boy, um, my grandparents lived in the country. So I always had to go down to the country in the summers and winters with them. And I'll be out in the fields and, and just playing and, and staying and yelling distance. So uh, that's that's how, you know, I was always in, engaged. And then even when my, my parents moved us out of the city and we went to the suburbs, like me and my friends are around, uh, we used to go on like the farms that are around and hang out in the haystacks and, and just chill, listen to music and everything else. So. Uh, nature has always been around me, uh, my family embedded in, in into me, um, but it, it wasn't always in the outdoor recreation sense that we think about uh, now. Um, so, you know, shout out to, you know, Wally and Nadie Mae Hollis for, you know, my grandparents for just getting me uh, out and about and, and showing me how to protect nature and be around nature. 
I love that. Protect nature. And I like what you said. It sounds like a song. I don't know. Hanging in the haystacks. I don't know. Listening to music. That sounds so cool. <laughs> I'm an urban <laughs> kid. So I just can imagine that. Well, um, what about you, Lael? How did you get into the outdoors and what keeps bringing you back? Um, I am from Kansas and I uh, was born and raised you know, fishing for, uh, for catfish, crappie and bass, but my, my parents have been fishing for forever. And I just was kind of brought up into that, um, that kind of, you know, recreational uh, weekend, you know, outdoor space, you know, with, with family, right? And it just grew into, you know, probably like, you know, five or six years old. I was like, I want to be a fishing guide. Like I, I, some people want to be a policeman or a fireman, fireman, or this is just something I always wanted to do. Um, I had the opportunity to, um, to, to come out to Seattle. Um, I was a surgical technologist and I had a contract at the children's hospital. And this was my second travel contract. And I came to Washington and I was like, I'm not going anywhere else. This is, this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, and uh, I just, I jumped into, uh, in the guiding, this is you know, years after, and just absolutely just loved it. All the people that I meet. Um, from all around the world and just sharing what I've always had a passion for and what I keep chasing, um, you know, from doing this, my, what, from what I wanted to do my whole life. Um, and then it turned into like, as I'm, you know, doing this event with you is I would really like for um, someone like myself to inspire another possible me or another person that's already in the industry to know that they actually have a chance, you know, and just go, go straight for it. I didn't, I didn't have that. I just had the the drive to make it to where I'm at, but I would have loved to have a role model. I, I just, I did not at the, at the time. Um, but I believe that, you know, if there's, if there's a space that's not, that hasn't been filled, it doesn't mean that it can't be. So um, that is, that is what, um, that's my next goal is to just try to help the, the next generation or just some, some, some child somewhere that's either, you know, you know, three, four years old to 15, 18 is like, I can do this. There's a guy that's doing this is like, let me, I want to go chase this dream. This is what I want to do. So. No, I love, I love what you said. It's crazy. Sometimes you keep reading about these first, the first, this, like you just said, Sophia, the first, that, the first thing is like, it's 2021. Are we still, we still just having first? Why are we having like, you know, this is a normal thing. And then like you said, like there may be people out there that we haven't heard of that the hidden That's figure, true. the That's hidden very, figure. Very type. And so you, you know, but right now, I'm just so glad that we have you and everyone on the show, because for a lot of us, you will be our first, <laughs> you know, you'll be the first <laughs> people that we know that are doing these things. And so um, thank you. And, and Sophia, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what brings you back to the outdoors and what got you into the outdoors? Sure. Well, I was always like that kid. I was always that kid who was running around and trying new things. Um, um, but I, you know, I describe my family as indoorsy. Um, my, my, I'm half Japanese. I was actually born in Japan. Um, and my, you know, I, I spent the first years of my life um, on a sugarcane farm um, without indoor plumbing, um, very rural. Um, and, you know, my father uh, grew up in um, Allendale, uh, South Carolina, that area, you know, picked cotton um, to help out his grandparents. And, you know, when his sort of mother went north during the great migration. And so I think my family just didn't think of outdoors as a place is like they recreate. I feel like there was like a, you know, something where they were outside all the time, but there was sort of a disconnect. But of course I was a child. I remember playing and running around in the sugarcane fields um, while I was waiting, you know, my, for my family who were, who were working in them. Um, and then when my father um, eventually became a doctor, um, we moved to Cincinnati and same thing. There was this big um, woods behind our townhouses. And so I would spend my free time, single dad at that point was raising us, um, running through the woods, climbing the trees, building forts. Um, and so I think it all came naturally to me. Um, the first like real time I ever did anything like backpacking, hiking, climbing, anything that people think of as sort of traditional like outdoor recreation, um, I signed up for it myself. Um, I always tell people like you hear these like inspirational stories about, you know, I was like, you know, how, you know, so when something happened, like, you know, um, and I was like, yeah, there was nothing like I didn't I didn't really 
have these moments, like these big pivotal moments. Um, um, but instead it was like a bunch of little things, right? A little, a little tiny things, small steps. Um, and in the end, I got myself there. Um, and as much as everyone loves the big stories, like everyone loves to be like, oh, so-and-so grab them out of the inner city and put them in the thing. Um, there's a limit, like there's a limit to like how many people like you can just change their life, right? Um, to me, like setting up systems and, and, you know, making it so that people get there themselves the way I did, you know, they don't have barriers. I think I got very lucky in that um, I was kind of accepted. Like I ran into friendly communities, um, you know, anywhere along the way, I could have gotten into some situation where I was like, oh, this is, this is not safe. This isn't fun. But, you know, I, I think I got really lucky with, you know, having welcoming communities. And then it was just creep. <laughs> you know, like once I started hiking, it was like, and then I started rock climbing and then ice climbing. And, you know, my best friend from high school wanted to climb Mount Rainier. Um, and we were living in the East Coast at the time. I had no idea what Mount Rainier was, even though I can like see it out my window where I live now. Um, and yeah, I just was like, yeah, sure, let's do that. Let's climb Mount Rainier. Like, let's look what, what Mount Rainier is. <laughs> and the two of us came out there and did that. Um, um, and then I was obsessed. Like once I found mountaineering, it was like every vacation, every weekend, every opportunity I had, like I, I was obsessed. Um, and I still am, but I still think I'm actually like, people think of me, I think, you know, they think of me as a mountaineer. It's like, it's a thing, right. But, um, you know, I try to do all the things. Like I love mountain biking. I love being a terrible kayaker. Like I am the worst snowboarder and I still do it. You know, I ski, I have a thing where I want to catch a fish and people are like, you've never been fishing. I'm like, no, I've been fishing. I want to catch a fish though. Like I've never actually caught a fish. Like that's my thing. So I, I just want to keep trying all this stuff all the stuff I'm terrible at. Um, I just have fun doing it and trying everything and being outside. Well, yeah, I love that. Um, I wanted to see there's a connection with a lot of you about this idea of nature or was around you, but, you know, knowing that you could actually do things, it, it was a journey, right? You sign up for something, James, it was always there. Lyle, it sounds like you know, your parents got you going into this, the fishing thing was very specific for you at a very young mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what we can do and what the community can do and what our legislatures can do and to make parks more accessible. And um, an accessible can look like a lot of things, just like activism. But what are some ways that you think um, accessibility in the parks looks like to you? You mentioned, um, Sophia, transportation, just getting there. But what are some other ways? And maybe we'll start with Sophia, go to James and end with Lyle on this one. What, is, what does accessibility look like to you for the outdoors? So I think there's just so many things. Like, you know, everyone, I think a lot of people focus on, you know, the the, the financial issues, right? They look at, you know, how much things cost. Um, and there is that, of course. Um, but we do find that like there's a lot around, you um, uh, the culture, the gear, um, the cost of the gear, getting the gear, um, not just getting the gear, but like feeling like you have to be dressed a certain way, looking a certain way, being exactly some particular way in order to be outside. Um, that in itself, I think can be a barrier. Um, and so I think that there's just something where, and I said this, like, I, I said this, you know, and it's very kindergarten, but I was like, we are still at a point right now where I feel like the outdoor recreation community, so not like super like the lands are, you know, open. I was like, okay, not the lands, but like the actual community that are there just need to just be more open to everybody. I do think that there is, you know, a little bit of a sort of, it's not even like an elitism, but there's sort of a gatekeeping, right? Like I was here and they were, you know, you saw it during the pandemic when so many people went outside and then you would see in the outdoor rec community that people were irritated. Like I've been going to this place for years and who are these new people? Um, and I just think that that needs to go. Like that just needs to go. <laughs> like people need to be welcome yeah. and opening to everybody because, you know, even if you're focusing on, um, you know, um, black and brown people, people with different abilities, um, people with different body types, the less you feel like you belong, the more likely that you're going to get like, you're, you're going to, that that's going to affect you. Right. I feel like if you are sort of, a, you know, young, white man, strong built, like you're not going to like somebody being rude to you, you're going to be like, what? Right. Versus 
if you feel look around and you're like, I don't think I belong here. And then someone's just elitist and rude the way they are to everybody, by the way, I have this, I always, I had these old guys in rock climbing and they're like, we don't discriminate against women. We're just mean to everybody. And I'm like, I know, except that there's no women here. And so when a woman, when you're mean to that woman, she's gonna, that's gonna be different than when you're mean to somebody who looks around and sees a billion people that are just like them. Um, and so to me, I think there's just something about the recreation community being more open, more friendly, less gatekeeping. It's just a first step. And then there's like a million other things. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good first step. That's so true. <laughs> what about you, James? What ideas do you have on that? I mean, Sophia just brought it up and and, and I agree is is being welcoming when we step in. So we, we talk about the gear, we talk about, you know, transportation, getting people there. And then once we get there, how how does the park rangers treat you? How does the camp host treat you? Um, how does people who recreate there? And as we see during the pandemic, uh, once again, a lot of people have been going and doing a lot of outdoor things. So you have those people who've been in those areas for the longest, um, who feel as though um, that it, it belongs to them, even though these are, are public spaces and how they treat individuals at, at, as you go in. And then also uh, we talk about cultural acceptance. Um, what, what does that mean? Like when we look at uh, the browning of America, there's a lot of people that are going into these spaces and um, how they recreate is different than um, the, tra tra the traditional sense. And so uh, when you see people um, doing certain things, if they're, if they're praying or um, if they have cultural traditions surrounding environment, like how do we accept that? How do we not um, treated as though, um, you know, is, is something that is, uh, oh, that we should belittle it or, or, or make it into something negative. How do we take these spaces that's been here for the longest and tell them that they also need to educate themselves on, you know, the diversity, the group, the, the demographics of Washington? So they can be more welcoming when these individuals come in and when these children come in, so they can come back and, and they can go back and forth. Um, or I mean, they can come back again. So we all know that um, when you feel welcoming, you're gonna go back. Um, when the food is great, you're gonna go back. Uh, when you have a great experience out of doors, um, you, you are willing to go back or share that experience. And we know when you have a bad experience, it, it's li literally, um, you might see a bad review, you might see a bad rating, or people will just not show up and they'll say, why we won't show up? And they will call people out. And young kids will call people out too, um, especially based off of their experiences. So um, that's where I look at, when I look at access, it's like, once we get there, then what? You know, how are we welcoming these spaces? So, yeah. So true. Yeah, I love what you're saying about people are gonna bring these different cultural uh, thought, whatever, to their camping experience or their hiking experience, or and then if you're stuck in this mold of this is this is the way we do it, then um, it's and it is there for everybody, as as you mentioned. So, uh, Laya, what about you? What what do, what does it mean to you? Um, my, so my thought process on um, just kind of getting out there is uh, has been throughout my own journey, and I, I I believe it should start with mindset. And I believe that it starts with the individual. Um, the individual could be me going into a new place. The individual could be the person that's welcoming me, hopefully, into a new place. Um, if I was waiting for acceptance, I wouldn't be here. I, I wasn't waiting for it. So I knew what I could control personally. And I was, I was looking for confrontation because I just really didn't know. And I was willing to um, be surprised when I didn't get it, right? And that, that's what changed me, right? Um, I always thought that, you know, I'd go to these different places where I'm not only the only person of color around, I'm the only person around, right? And then it, you know, the more that I went into these spaces, you know, um, I'd still get, get looks, it's a little different, you know, every now and then, but, you know, after I had, um, I had got comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? I was pleasantly surprised with the reactions that I've got, you know, there's, there's different looks that you get, there might be different words that you may get, but I knew what I could control myself. And that's what let me get here. And that is usually what I'm 100% trying to tell other people is, is like, you can control your mindset, right? I wish that everybody would put a hand out there 
and make it easy for you, but that's not how I got here, right? You can change that on your own before you even step into that place. Get comfortable with something awkward happening. Just expect if it doesn't happen, it's wonderful. Enjoy everything about the outdoors that, that will keep you coming back, right? Um, and that is usually what I'm trying to tell people is just, just let, let's work on, it's a process. We are, we are waiting for things to be more accepting um, it does not happen in five minutes. We have we have to have a lot more people in these groups and these talks. But you can control. Like you're never going to change that um, that culture if you're not showing up in the first place. We just have we have to show up. Want it, want it. I and I hope that you know throughout what we're doing right now, we can just make more people want it. Um, and that's that's my uh, that's my goal. And I just want to help people be prepared um for what they may see and this is just this is not from people this is just in nature i'm a guy that i just want to be um you know preparing other people for the situations they may be in right this is this own the space you deserve to be there like anyone Correct. else and Correct. you do and um yeah like you said if we waited if we all waited it's 400 years later so <laughs> it's still be yeah. waiting yeah. for sophia to make her be the first person <laughs> to make african american yeah. to make that yeah. accent so Gosh, you know, we, there's so much more to talk about. We are going to run out of time so quickly. I did want to ask Sophia if you could just tell us briefly about what a parks commissioner does um, so that people know this opportunity to get involved in the way that you have. And then after you do that, everybody, would you just tell us what's next and how people can follow you and learn more about what you what you do? Um, Sophia, what, is, what do you do as a park commissioner? And then what are you up to next? Uh, so a park, so um, Washington State Parks is actually a commission run agency. And so um, it is run by a seven member volunteer pretty much. Um, and there's, I won't even get in all that, but a volunteer commission. Um, and um, we are essentially setting the policy direction for Washington State Parks. Um, we are making major decisions about park acquisition, about surplusing lands, about what types of concession concessionaires we might um, allow, um, depending on how big the decision is. Um, you know, we're not sitting there sort of with every sort of kayak guide, but like, you know, if we're gonna, for example, um, St. Edwards State Park has essentially a hotel in it, that type of decision. Um, we make those, we, we are the body that makes those decisions. Um, it is appointed by the governor um, and it is, you know, it's it's not just this commission. There are a lot of these opportunities, I think. Um, I'm also on um, boards and, um, and they are, they're out there and they're looking for folks. Um, you do apply. And I do think that there is a little bit of an issue where it's very insider. Um, and I, I have a special talent, apparently. I think it comes from being, um, you know, born in Japan and sort of kind of just having to mold and meld everywhere, right? Of becoming kind of, I'm very good at sort of becoming insiders at places, but um, it is something that I think a lot of people don't know about, not just this commission, but um, that there are sort of these these opportunities out there um, in the state um, and in other places that, um, again, you can apply for, you can ask folks um, about how they got involved. Um, they can actually connect to network, um, things like that. Um, currently, for example, you know, we are, we do have um, a proviso, we call it, but essentially their Washington State Parks has a project we're doing right now specifically with black folks in state parks, or actually it's out, outdoor recreation in Washington State. Um, it is going to be a 12 member um, committee that's doing a very quick study. Um, um, I think we're short one member at this point. I think we found 11, but um, we had to kind of go out there. We had to go out there and kind of like find people um, because I think that um, people don't tend to find find us. And so, um, yeah, I would encourage people. Um, it's, it is buried. It is um, bureaucratic. I think we need to work on our side about, again, making these opportunities more obvious to, and more sort of public. But also, um, I'm like, folks can look for me. Um, it's actually the state parks. If you go to like the about us part of the state parks, the same place where you make reservations and stuff, it's on there. Um, there's information about us. Um, and yeah, you can you can find me there if anyone has any. We actually just appointed a new commissioner out of Spokane. Um, they are, we do try to have geographic diversity. Um, there is a possibility there'll be another opening in Western Washington sometime soon um, within this year. Um, so, um, and probably two more next year. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. Oh, thank you, thank you. And if there's uh, some place where people can check you out, Sophia, where's that? And then we'll go to 
Lyle and we'll go to James. Um, where can people hear more about what you're up to next? Uh, I am bad at all the things, but um, at Sophia Klein is my Instagram. I am trying to be better about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, oh man, I'm trying to Instagram. But anyways, that's a whole nother 2022 resolution. <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. At Sophia um, on Instagram. What does it say one more time? Um, it's at Sophia Climbs. Climbs. Oh, Climbs. All right. And uh, what about you, Lyle? What about you? So um, you can yeah, find like me you. on uh, on Instagram. I'm, uh, I, I'm trying to be a little bit better as, on Instagram as well. Um, and that's, uh, it's at Fly Guide. And Fly Guide is F-L-Y-G-Y-D-E. Um, just following my adventures there will help you a lot to see what, what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. Seeing somebody catch a fish will make you want to go catch a fish. That's the objective of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, my, I, I, I love social media. Social media is actually what got me here in the first place. Um, that uh, if I was not able to prove, and this is just in, being in the, in the professional, right? You have to prove that you can do what you're doing. And it also helps me, um, you know, let someone else know. I'm like, well, if I'm doing it, you can do it, right? And I want to, uh, you know, do my best to try to prepare somebody again. And uh, Instagram is a very, very great tool. Um, uh, Facebook as well. Um, you can find me on my website also at uh, flyguide.com. Um, and I'm very receptive to phone calls. So I like cool. talking fish and I want to prepare people. And uh, I know a lot of, there's a many, many, many things that I've found out in the outdoors. Like I, I, I snowboard like James does as well. Um, I like helping people. You come here, I'm from Kansas. I didn't know anything. I would love to ask many, many, many questions. And I did find a lot of people that helped me out. I did not get here by myself at all. Um, but I just like talking to people you can, you know, give me a shout. And I'd love to, you know, take a couple of minutes, answer some of your questions, just make it a little more comfortable for you to be out in Washington. Well, let's, let's, that's wonderful. And I just want to make sure people get the right fly guy. Can you spell it for us, please? It's F is in Frank, L is in Lima, Y is in year, G is in George, Y is in year, D is in dog. He is in edward.com um, right. and, and the Instagram is spelled the same way. Fly guide. The guide, everyone, is the G-Y-D-E. G-Y-D-E. -E. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There might be another fly guide out there. I don't know what <laughs> yeah. they're doing, but we Welcome. want you. Uh, <laughs> and good news, y'all. We, um, we can just go a little bit longer. So, um, James, how, how can people thank you? Um, how can people reach out and find out more about what you're doing? Yeah, you can always uh, hit me up on Instagram as well at seal of approval. So S-E-A-L underscore of underscore approval. Um, and, you know, I, I definitely follow my social medias. I'm working on uh, my, my consulting firm website and, and everything right now. And then I got a couple of projects um, just came from Borough, Alaska, uh, with a cultural exchange, pr uh, project. So shout out to, to Junior Kim and CJ, uh, where we, uh, played out and enjoyed the tundra, uh, fishing, hunting, plus more. Um, and then I'm getting ready now for a project called Shark Therapy. It's the second year, um, where we're taking young, uh, Black men, and we're teaching them about urban ecology. And then we're going all the way down to uh, Florida where we'll be snorkeling with sharks. So uh, this is the second you know, year that we did this. And uh, so those are like two of the major projects that I have going on right now. And then also just like while I'm in Seattle, just supporting friends and other, other projects that, that are going on. Um, to get engaged youth outdoors and, and figure out um, where's the money uh, coming to, how we can do better in programming, um, how we can uh, outreach more. Um, I'm a part of a, a couple of nonprofits here, but um, that's that's pretty much what I have um, that's going thus, thus far, man. And, and I just, like I said, it's just about having fun, engaging people, and then looking at, you know, um, what are what are some of the policies that are hindering us to to get out or can help better support us on the state, local and federal level. So, yeah. You know that uh, just a question with that, then, James, because you're talking about at the beginning, you work with all age ranges, not that Sophia and Lael don't either. 
but I'm just wondering, since you're working so much with youth, you're planning this trip, what's the word on the street in the black community about with the kids? How are they feeling about the, you know, like, just give us the doubt. Like, are they excited? Mm. Are they telling their friends or are they like, man, nobody's interested in this because I try to say, hey, let's go for camping, camping bugs, ah, you know, it, it goes into the space. And I'm just wondering what, what kids that you work with are saying, how, how excited are they about being the generation that's gonna be taking over all these parks and the responsibilities and are they interested? You, you get it all, you get, you get a different array. And so you get those who parents have taken them outside in some type of fashion form. You get those who have never been out or you get those who probably dibbed and dab um, here and there. But once again, it's, it's about, um, you know, making sure they feel welcome and, and secure in those spaces and, and those parents know what's going on. I mean, we, we talk about the outdoors um, as African-Americans, we talk about the outdoors sometimes in, in a negative sense um, because we have some traumas that happen in the outdoors, but yet and still we have some positive things that happen in the outdoors well. Um, so when I when I talk about it, I tell I show them about those historical figures, um, individuals who you know been in the outdoors. When we talk about Buffalo Soldiers, let's talk about how they mountain biked, um, and they was like one, considered one of the first mountain bikers, uh, you know, to go across the United States and everything else. Like let's start talking about uh, individuals in the outdoors that are are black and, and doing great things and showing those images. So when we show them those images, um, they're gonna take that step and they're gonna also, they need to know, they need to learn that they can take the step that they want. Um, and, 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 you know, so it's, it's like, hey, let's start small, let's start car camping and then let's, let's, let's do something big. And they gotta feel comfortable with their guides too. Um, so, you know, who, who they're around. And so I don't, you know, normally, um, two or three months out, you know, I'm introducing myself uh, to their families and everything else. And we're talking about the trip and I'm showing them videos and everything else. So it's, it's really about feeling comfortable. And then when they get out there, like how they can be themselves and enjoy, enjoy space. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I love making sure that they can enjoy space and they can grow and they can challenge themselves um, in the outdoors. So, you know, that, that positive, challenge that you know they have to face so they can know that when they come back into the city or they come back home that they can challenge other things in a positive way to help grow them so i, I think the outdoors give them that growth at times yeah I agree. Nature gives them the growth so yeah 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 definitely there's a connection between the outdoors and who you walk as a human being you know it just it lives in you and you you follow through with that wherever you go if you're comfortable outside, comfortable inside, you are here, you're set, right? And, um, you know, we're going to, I'm gonna ask this final question and it's something we always ask at um, Sundays Outside. Um, so if you can think about it in one sentence, what does the outdoors mean to you? A lot of, you know, everyone's kind of said all these things. It's hard to put it in maybe a, a sentence or two, but, what does the outdoors mean to you? And Lael, I'll start with you. Um, the outdoors for me is just unlimited discovery. I can't run out of it. There's, I've been many, many, many places and there's many, many places that I haven't been. Um, and I'm just gonna chase it to my last breath. That's, it's, it's never gonna end. The journey always continues. I love it. Okay, everybody, we're getting some new, some new books. That's your book title, by the way. Just want you to know. Um, okay, <laughs> James, what about you? What's, what's uh, happening to you? For me, the outdoors is is liberation. Mm. Liberation. Woo! All right then. And um, I'm sorry, I was thinking, we, we actually, I just got back from Yellowstone, Grand Tetons and Glacier. And we liberate everything you're saying, endless um, li liberation and being like we would count. I went with an, uh, two, a couple, uh, my husband and I and another couple, we were counting the number of black people that we saw at all three of these parks. <laughs> Very few had to own my space. Like you said, I deserve to be there. Um, and um, but it's so liberating and 
I just want to let you know everyone, the, the most black people I saw was at Yellowstone. So we were trying to figure out is that because it's the biggest one and it's da 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 da. But everywhere else, not so not so much. Sophia, what what is uh, the outdoors mean to you? Gosh, it's so much, right? It's changed my life, like my entire mm -hmm. life, right? Um, because of the outdoors. But um, I think for me, it's the, the exploration, um, uh, the peace. You know, I talk a lot about sort of in other places about um, uh, the isolation that I have a lot of social anxiety. And so for me, there's sort of the peace. Um, there's these sort of amazing, just the wonder, um, sort of small little things. Um, you know, this constant discovery is just, um, it's so much. I don't think, I'm not sure if I could put it into one sentence. <laughs> no, that's, that was, that's beautiful. I'm hearing peace, liberation, and endless opportunities and possibilities, y'all. Woo! I think that is good. I love it. I love it. I am so honored and excited to have met all of you, I'm sure everyone watching is also. Um, please check out um, Sophia Dannenberg, James King Jr., and Lael P. Johnson at all of the different ways you can, either on the commission sites or the uh, community organization or their organ, their companies or whatever they're doing. I think someone's putting it in a chat somewhere. And I really want to thank you three for sharing your experiences with us. And I know we just touched, as they say, the tip of the iceberg. And I, I look forward to, um, I will not at this point in my life with the gray be um, snowboarding, but I will be skiing with y'all when you do that. I'll be, I'll be wading in the water as you're fishing because I'll probably have to release <laughs> and I will do a hike with you, Sophia. I did half dome, but I am not going to go any further than that. No ice hiking for me. But um, y'all are beautiful. So let's, you know, you're all doing things, activism, just by being yourselves and being in those spaces and working with people and showing them what they can do. And I want, I really appreciate you activating yourselves and sharing your voices to impact what others are doing in the outdoors. And everyone who's watching, we ask you to do the same, right? Um, and speaking of making more public spaces available, the way that you all are doing that, trying to get people out into the outdoors, um, but also, um, Speaking of that, making more public spaces available, um, now everyone who's watching, now's your chance. Using our voices and sharing our thoughts, we are asking you to do this. We kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. So um, uh, using our voices, sharing our thoughts and opinions and, and what we need and what we want in these public spaces in form of activism, um, we're putting in the link in the chat for you, yes, you, to get involved in Miller State Peninsula Park, okay? So yes, everyone out there, you can get involved in Miller State Peninsula Park. Let them know what you would like to see in the park, what experiences you would like to have there. And also we know that um, in Washington State, they have a number of free park days in which you don't need a Discover Pass, right? That's very exciting. And one of those free park days, and I'm sorry if I'm, talking really fast for the interpreter, so I will slow down. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my gosh, we went a little over time. So thank you for, for watching with us. If you're still with us, we hope so. So the next free park day is August 25th um, with the Washington State Parks. So visit a park August 25th. You don't need your Discover Pass. And this is to celebrate National Park Service's birthday, the birthday for the National Park Service. August 25th. Now, if you miss August 25th and you still want to go to one of many, one of the many beautiful state parks we have in Washington, then we know, you know, like we talked about cost being prohibitive. Well, what we're doing at Sundays Outside is we are giving away one Discover Pass. So um, all you have to do is visit our site. It'll be in the chat there. Go to Sundays Outside and tell us what you think of this event and you can be entered for a chance to win a free discover pass woo, woo. and um there'll be a, a survey that will put that, that will be part of this so that we can get some feedback 
And speaking of getting to the parks, check out the upcoming performances that the Washington State Parks folk and, tra and traditional arts program are putting on. Um, later this month in August, on August 28th at Waikiki Beach at Cape Disappointment, the singer, songwriter, Briar will be performing a mix of vintage jazz, blues, and original music. So that's August 28th at Cape Disappointment. Um, look for Briar and their music. And, you know, here we are. We're at the end of our program. Um, I've just had a great time. It went by too quickly. I would have loved to have more conversation with our guests, but it's that time. So we want to say thank you to our sponsors, the Washington State Parks Foundation, the Wilderness Society, Washington Trails Association, the National Endowment for the Arts, Conservation Northwest, the National Parks Conservation Association, REI, the Trust for Public Lands, Washington State Parks Folk and Traditional Arts Program. Today was fun. I want to also thank the Wilburns. Thank you so much for your beauty and your music and your commitment to the community and the drumming, the drumming. I want to thank Sophia and Lael and James for sharing their knowledge. Um, I want to also thank Monica, Kiwi, Brandy, Siobhan, Michaela, and also our interpreters, Aaron and Avery. Thank you so much. Um, and so make sure to follow on social media at Golden Breaks, Bricks. Woo, we won, can't get that wrong. Follow us on social media at Golden Bricks Events or on our website, goldenbricksevents.com. Now next month for Sundays Outside, we'll be talking about women. So don't miss it, RSVP today. Thank you again for joining us for Sundays Outside where we celebrated black activism and all the beautiful people here. And hopefully you had some ice cream. Mine is all gone. I, I, it's actually melted. So I'll be, I'll be drinking my ice cream in a minute. So <laughs> thank you, Sophia, James, Leal, and we will talk with you later. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you.